Okay, good evening ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Samuel. I'm from Sunway Test. And then it is my great pleasure to welcome everyone to our engagement session titled Build Your Future with MIGPA. Uh, we are very glad to engage our esteemed speakers uh, as they take you on a journey that highlight their life stories, uh, real life challenges that they encountered and the motivation behind their success. Okay, uh, now I would like to extend a warm welcome to Miss Emily Chung, the head of program of Sunway Test, and Miss Eileen, the head of marketing of MIGPA Malaysia, to deliver their welcome remarks. Uh, welcome, Miss Eileen and Miss Emily. Thank you, Samuel. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, Miss Emily, head of MIGPA at Sunway Test, CAE. We are very delighted to have our speaker, Mr. Ong from EY, to join us tonight, as well as our two finalists, Nabaya and Shingi. Who have just completed the capstone finalist uh, finals yesterday? Yeah. So um summer test started off with the first full cohort in term 2019. It is not until term 3, 2019 that we also include the part-time study modes. Yeah. At summer test, all our candidates will go through a series of lectures as well as revision classes. The facilitator will provide and discuss examination question and clinic during this uh, during the classes. There are also internal progress test and mock exam, which are set distinctly um, similar to the actual examination. So the result of the test and the exam are indicator of the candidate's progress in their study. All right. In addition, we also incorporate soft skills yeah, to prepare our candidate with graduate level skill required for the job market. This will include like in communication, interpersonal and intervene skill. Since the inception of MIPA CANS program, in, 19, uh, in 2019, January, we have over 20 candidates who have emerged with high marks to achieve pass with merit as well as top scorers. MIPA CANS enrollment is open for registration now, and the closing date is on the 4th of January, 2021. And Summer Test has already started taking in registration for Term 1, 2021. The full-time and part-time classes will start on the third week of January, but due to the pandemic, we will most likely start off with the online classes. Once the CMCO is lifted, classes will be back to normal. That is, we will be conducted face-to-face. Uh, -face. So feel free to contact me or Mr. Samuel on the registration. The contact details will be posted later. Thank you and enjoy your session tonight. Over to you, Samuel. Uh, Eileen, yeah. Hi, thanks. Thanks, everyone. Hi, good evening. It's really great to see so many of you here joining us tonight. So I'd like to give you some context about MICPA, the Malaysian Institute of Certified Public Accountants. So we're the only Malaysian professional body established since 1958. And our main role is to support our members, especially in technical areas, and to provide education to develop more professionally qualified certified public accountants for um, the nation. Not just the nation, we have members that have gone abroad to practice and our qualification is internationally recognized. So since 2009, we've conducted our program in a different way. We, we formed a joint program with Chartered Accountants Australia and New Zealand or CANS for short. And with this one program, you actually are provided with two qualifications and can use the title Certified Public Accountant or CPA and Chartered Accountant or CA. So um, in terms of global mobility, our members can gain access to the Global Accounting Alliance or GAA, which comprises the top accounting bodies around the world and provides members with technical support locally. So for instance, if you were to go to the US to work, you can actually get support from AICPA because they are part of the GAA. And what's really important for a professional is that you do get the technical updates, you know, you understand how things work in that jurisdiction. And that's why it's important to be part of a local body. And so the GAA will be able to provide you with this um, support wherever you go around the world. There's 10 of the top bodies in the GAA. So in terms of the program, I'm proud to say that we've had excellent candidates taking up MIGPA. And through the open books and the assessment format, 
the key thing is that we really emphasize the need to develop analytical thinking skills rather than your memorizing skills. And I think in today's world where professionals, you know, you, you are um, looked to for advice and to help solve problems, you really need to develop your thinking skills. So our exam questions focus on real life business scenarios and our final capstone module is a very interesting one, which is a real life business case. You, know, you follow through uh, from a business perspective and you cover all the technical areas. You get to see the bigger picture of how things fit into a real life business. In terms of our average pass rate to date, since we started the joint program uh, in 2009, we've maintained an average of 70%, which is very good, but doesn't mean that it's an easy program. I think later on our candidates can testify it's not that it's easy, but I think um, I am proud to say that we have had excellent candidates coming through our doors who have managed to acquire the necessary application skills. Um, so right now, our program comprises five modules. If you come from an accredited university, you will get full exemptions from our professional stage and you go straight into the advanced stage, which is the five modules. And you can start, the earliest that you can start is actually in year four of a four-year degree, or you can wait till you've completed your degree and then start the program. The other point is that you can start full-time now. Since last year, we've been running full-time programs and Sunway Test is one of our tuition providers. Alternatively, you can secure employment and study our program on a part-time basis. So you work and study and you get to apply what you learn into your work and vice versa. In terms of sponsorships, many employers actually do provide sponsorship for their staff to take up the program. Alternatively, if you prefer full-time study, we do have sponsorships available from time to time. I encourage you to follow MIGPA on social media. We're on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. So whenever we have such opportunities for sponsorship, you'll be able to uh, find out about it firsthand and you can apply for them. There's also our student sponsorship program, which links you to an employer way before you graduate. So if you recall, I said you can start our program in year four. So you apply for this in year three. One of our participating employers, if they uh, see strong talent and they're keen to sponsor you early on, they will offer you an internship, a job offer, and sponsorship to start the program in year four of your degree. So that just means that you get to finish the program much earlier after you've started full-time work. So we have candidates going through all various pathways. So you have many options. It's a very flexible program. You can switch from part-time to full-time study and you know, up to you to suit your timetable. We give you eight years to complete the entire program. So I think um, later on, you will hear from an esteemed member. We're very proud to have our council member who did the old program, the MIGPA program prior to our collaboration with Ken's. And you'll also get to hear from two candidates who've gone through the joint program with Ken. So you'll hear from um, various perspectives. So I hope that gives you a lot more insights and I, uh, I'm excited to hear from them. So um, thanks, I'm gonna hand back the time to you. Okay, uh, thank you, Emily and Miss, I Miss, uh, Miss Eileen as well, all right. Uh, okay, moving on to our main agenda of the night. Uh, our next speaker is a prominent figure in the industry and we are truly honoured uh, in having him joining us tonight. Uh, allow me to give a short introduction of him. Uh, Mr. Ong Chiwai is a MIGPA Council member and Malaysia Assurance Leader of Ernst & Young. He has over 25 years of experience in providing assurance and business advisory services to various large diversified conglomerates, multinationals, and government-linked corporation. Chiwai holds a bachelor degree in accounting, Hans from University of Malaya, and thereafter qualified as a certified public accountant in 1997. He is a council member of MIGPA and as well as MIA. A warm welcome to you, Mr. Ong. The platform is all yours. 
Thank you, Samuel. Uh, and once again, thank you, Sunway TS and MICPA for inviting me to uh, join this forum to share with everyone about my, in a way, journey and experience uh, during the earlier days. Uh, I noticed that Samuel mentioned about the years. I was trying to avoid the year. Uh, yeah, 20 odd years ago that when I started my journey and pursuing my qualification as a, a CPA. When Eileen talked to me about uh, having this sharing, I was actually, I couldn't help but actually relate back to uh, the earlier days when how I started. I graduated from University of Malaya uh, then and uh, the objective of me was very clear. I just want to obtain a professional qualification and I joined an accounting firm uh, called Arthur Anderson. Maybe some of you may have read it in your textbook. It's no longer in existence today. So then I, while working, I also attempted uh, the professional exam. And during the time, because I was a local graduate, I need to sit for the final stage, PE2. It's called PE2, slightly different from what you are calling today. Uh, the, the final exam consisting of uh, four papers. And it is, the exam system was actually one paper a day. A paper probably uh, cover three to four hours and you have to continuously from Monday to Thursday that you, you got to sit for the, for the, for the papers. And uh, you got to actually pass every single paper. All right, so that was the structure of the exam. During the first attempt, uh, I, didn't, I didn't pass all. I failed one paper. I can remember for life the paper, financial accounting. So I had one failure, four passes. So after my, my that particular paper was uh, actually passed, what it means is that I could receive four altogether, four, whatever the three pass is, wasn't really counted. And uh, typically in any system like, like currently, you have a principal. And my principal in the firm was a partner who has retired since. So uh, when compared among my peers, uh, typically again in, in during that era, uh, the expectation of those students or candidates who graduated from Unis Malaya, expectation is that you could clear once, just once. There's no like repeat or whatsoever. And I was the only exception, I think among the six or seven, my fellow cosmates that actually didn't make through those uh, uh, that the first attempt. So the partner actually called me, my principal called me and, and asked me the reasons. I, well, I couldn't really explain the reasons. And he was actually saying that if you cannot clear the exam next time, I'm going to throw you down from seventh floor. Mm -hmm. The time my office was actually less. <clears throat> that was the highest floor, seventh floor. And uh, <clears throat> he was <clears throat> sharing with me that to pass exam is very simple. Of course, very simple to him. He has passed exam, but not to me. So he said, what you have to do is really to be really determined and one, two months towards the exam, you just need to uh, wake up five o'clock in the morning, spend one, two hours to study before you go to work. <clears throat> <clears throat> of course, you know that typically working in accounting firm, the working hours at times is getting very long. Evening, you could attend classes. It was so, so tired. So, well, he was a partner. I could have listened to him. So, okay, fine. I remember what, what I remember most is you throw me down from seventh floor. So I better be careful. So I went for second attempt. Second attempt, uh, I passed three and a half. Actually, the paper that I didn't pass by the time was marginal pass or marginal fail, whatever you call it. Again, was the finance, financial accounting. I cleared the other three papers. So my second attempt, I have one uh, marginal fail, marginal pass at a point in time. So fortunately, the system was that I could sit for just that particular paper. I needed to receive uh, the if the all four papers again. Uh, of course, after the second attempt, uh, I, I was trying very hard to avoid my principal. Uh, and I was trying to avoid not going to seventh floor. My office was sixth floor. So the final attempt, the third time, I sat for the only paper and I managed to clear that. And uh, at the end, within the still within the period, I managed to obtain the uh, professional qualification CPA, just like the rest of my uh, uh, colleagues that uh, they, they clear earlier, but they still took them three years to actually have to fulfill the practical experience. So I managed to catch up the three years, despite I feel one, two times, uh, then I managed to catch up. So when, when I look back the that little journey, um, very memorable journey, actually a few things that I thought maybe render sharing with everyone here. Uh, 
uh, first and foremost is that the exam itself, MICPA qualification, really helped me to strengthen and provided me with a, a very solid technical foundation. I graduated from University of Malaya uh, with a second upper honors degree. Uh, at the time, second upper was considered quite good and I was, I sure I took the exam lightly. And, uh, and, and that, that made me realize that the gaps that I, I had at the earlier stage of my career and with that exam and the test, really test, that helped me a lot in building the foundation for me to progress in my career in the subsequent years. I think that that is really significant. I, I when I compare after I had my qualification to probably two, three years before, I think I, I know that, at least I know that I'm there, I'm there. When I was graduated from Unis Malaya, I thought I was there. Actually, I wasn't there. So that is a clear cut test and, and uh, tested me and told me a very clear message. And I, I really appreciate that, that journey that I went through. The second lesson that I actually learned arising from this episode is that uh, if you want to do anything, really, there's no such thing as very difficult and cannot be done. And there are two important ingredients in, 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 doing, in doing that. Number one is really having the determination. Simple thing like passing exam, you got to determine. And number two, you got to have the discipline to execute uh, what you need to do. And that type of uh, attitude, in a way, when I went through the exam, actually helped me to shape my character and my style uh, since then. So I think this is a, uh, another significant milestone and event that I, I, I benefited from, from there. The third thing that I actually gather or, or personally I feel is that comparing among the professional bodies, not to discredit anybody, I, I feel more connected with, with uh, MACPA because this is the, first of all, it's my mother body and this is the Malaysian uh, born professional qualification that really looking after and training professional accountants in Malaysia. The content, the technical aspect, uh, the focus has always been that making sure that we as a country can produce qualified and competent accountants that can contribute to our society and capital market. And because of that, um, when I progressed in my career, uh, when I got somehow stabilized as a director or before I went, when became a partner, I actually volunteered myself to be in the working committee of MACPA. I thought that uh, since I've already passed, um, I, I should contribute back to the profession and, and to the institute. And I was roped in, coincidentally, I was roped into the examination committee. So, of course, I didn't take revenge. There's no revenge. Since previously, MACPA failed me two times, I am going to make all the students' life difficult. No, 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 it's not. It so happened that I was actually roped into the examination committee. And thereafter, um, somehow when I make partner, I was also naturally like in a way uh, being elected to the council of MICPA and until today. When I look back today uh, in the recent years, in fact, past 10 years, MACPA had this uh, uh, program with CNZ uh, that even opening up a wider door for many of the MICPA uh, qualified accountants that uh, there are so much opportunities that you can actually pursue via the CANZ uh, routes. In fact, during my, my, uh, my time, the, when I compare against other professional bodies, we also very feel very proud that MACPA is one of the body. If you tell in the in commerce, uh, you, you actually a MICPA graduate, uh, the, the, the impression that you created is, to, is, is very different. Even within the firm, we, as a partner now also, we actually place a lot of uh, importance in uh, those who graduated from or, or finished their MICPA program. Because we have gone through that, we know the quality of training, and we know that uh, what characters and technical skills that the program has built. So with that, I hope that that provides you some perspective in relation to MICPA. Not because I, I started with MICPA, I'm, because of this topic of today, I'm just blindly promoted. I'm really, 
I, I shared with the organizer early on when I joined the call, I really feel passionate and feel very proud of the professional bodies at my CPA. And I'm looking forward that to see many younger generation like all of you here, potential to become our member, our proud members and helping to together with the rest of the existing members looking into very important objective, really contribute to nation building because we are the one that playing an important role in corporate, whether you are in the line as a CFO, as a auditors or tax agent whatsoever, all of us contributing to the, uh, in ensuring that, uh, provide that assurance to our capital market, making sure that at the corporate level, we have qualified, experienced and competent professionals jointly run many organizations and that is actually part and parcel of nation, na nation building. If you look around the rest of the bodies, I think I would have to say that the bodies are really, really looking after the country, the, the country and Malaysia's interest, I think this is the one. And if you are passionate about nation building, probably a small step to contribute towards that is really uh, become a member. And there are tons of opportunity for you to do and to, to contribute to in whatever form that you are passionate. Um, Samuel, Aline, I think that, that is that much. I think I've taken up the time to, to have a quick sharing. I'm happy to uh, answer any questions later on. I will just stay on uh, and probably listen to the rest of the candidates. I think one of the speaker later on is also my colleague in EY. So I'm looking forward to hear what she's going to say as well. All right. Thank you, Samuel. Thanks so much, Chiwai. Yeah, thank you, Chiwai, for the wonderful sharing. Uh, I believe the students have greatly benefited from your sharing session. Yes, uh, to, those, to, to those of you, if you have any questions uh, for Mr. Chiwai, uh, later on, we will have a Q&A session. So you can actually put in your question in the chat box or you can unmute yourself and to ask Mr. Chiwai later on. All right. So moving on to our next agenda, uh, we have two MIGPA finalists to share their experience as a MIGPA candidate. Uh, allow me to give you a short introduction of the two MIGPA finalists. Uh, the first finalist is Yip Shini. Uh, she is a MIGPA finalist and she is an audit associate in PwC Malaysia. Shini holds a bachelor degree in business and commerce, majoring in accounting, banking and finance. She graduated from Monash University Kuala Lumpur. Our second finalist is Siti Nurbaya. She is also a MIGPA finalist and she was an intern with Maybank, Sapura Energy and an auditor in EY. Siti Nurbaya holds a Bachelor of Commerce majoring in Accounting and Finance. She graduated from University of Auckland, New Zealand. Uh, both of them joined Sunway Test in January 2019 and uh, both of them have attempted capstone module in December 2020 exam sitting, which is the recent exam sitting, and they will be sharing their experience uh, in attempting this module. Okay, so without further ado, Shini, I will hand over the session to you. The platform is all yours, Shini. All right. Hi, everyone. Thank you, and thank you Samuel. Uh, before I start, I just wanted to thank Miss Emily and Samuel Tess for uh, the opportunity for me to share my journey here. Lah. Um, I hope my sharing will be useful for you all to you know, better understand the program and the benefits it brings. Uh, right, so I'll just start off with why I decided to pursue MIGPA Cairns. Um, I still remember when I completed my final year in uni, actually, I, to be honest, I didn't know much about this program. Uh, I went to somewhere open day and I bumped into Miss Emily and it was then I got introduced with this program. So for me, the main reasons that it attracted me was firstly uh, because of the dual memberships and qualifications that it offers. Um, both are globally recognized. And secondly, was also the structure of the program itself. So this sets, up, sets, it, sets it apart from other professional accounting courses because it's not 100% exam based. Um, throughout the module, we will be sitting uh, with online assessments and then uh, we, we might have assignments. And also uh, for this additional capstone module that we have to attend like workshops and presentation, uh, which each will make, mix up a portion to your final results. So um, I, I felt like it was very unique in a way that it trains you to be more of an all-rounder. And uh, it's very useful uh, you know, in my work life and can help me to develop myself uh, professionally. 
And I also choose it to do in summer test because uh, as everybody knows, summer has a really good reputation uh, in the professional accountancy. I mean, as a professional accountancy provider, and they ha also have a lot of experienced lecturers that will uh, help us to get through the modules. And uh, the, after getting through all these modules and attending the classes from summer test, I would say they really provided us with um, a really good learning environment. Uh, you know, I also get to know a lot of people from uh, different firms uh, attending the summer classes. And we are also very much encouraged to participate more in class discussion uh, with lecturers. Um, so it really, I guess, helped me to be more vocal, to voice out my thoughts and opinions. And apart from that, uh, another thing that I find really useful was the mock exams organized by summer test. So for each module, there'll be a few mock exams uh, for us to you know, sit through and then to better prepare for the final exam. And you know, because time management will be very important for the final exam, which I find myself struggling uh, also uh, you know, to finish a paper on time. And uh, this mock exam definitely helped me to prepare my time better. But of course, it's gonna be quite stressful at times and you know, quite challenging because uh, in the midst of having all these assessments throughout the module period, you still have to sit for the mock exams. I remember there are times where I procrastinated because you know, I was so drained doing all these tests and uh, assessments. Uh, I would say it takes a lot of discipline and to push yourself to study and make sure that uh, I complete all the resources that were that was given to me by Cairns uh, as much as possible. And sometimes it's also, I will also have to sacrifice uh, many of my weekends to study. And it, it, so uh, a lot of commitment, la. You, you have to put a lot of commitment into studying. But these assessments and exams are what exactly forces you to study consistently. Uh, and it will be worthy at the end because your hard work is going to pay it off. And apart from that, what motivates me to uh, to not give up and keep going also uh, for the reason that uh, being professionally qualified you opens a lot of uh, doors for me. And if you provide me with a lot of opportunity for career advancement. So that's kind of reason that uh, they kept me going and not giving up. And uh, it's also a really good feeling when you get to apply what you study uh, in your work and you get to contribute to your team discussion at work or uh, you know when uh, I get to solve some accounting issues uh, for my clients at, at work. Um, so yeah, uh, finally, I think I'm going to move on to the capstone module, which I know a lot of you uh, are very curious about. Uh, in this module, I was required to work with a team of five across three workshops. So there will be a presentation at the end of the third workshop, and all this workshop will contribute a total of 40% to your final result. And uh, like what Eileen has mentioned earlier, it focuses more on your ability to analyze business issues uh, in real life and trains your problem solving skills. And a big part of it will be revolving around ethics. And prior to the workshop, uh, I was given with pre-workshop activities and then some I will be uh, required to complete with my team and include it in a minutes report to submit to Cairns with the remaining that uh, will be discussed during the workshop itself. And how we are assessed during the workshop will be more of uh, our participation in class and team discussion and uh, the quality of our discussion will also be assessed. So it's very important that you take initiatives uh, in class to answer the questions uh, asked and also to participate and uh, articulate well what you are presenting your, uh, in order for you to fight for your marks. Uh, because um, there will be limited time, you wouldn't have enough time. I mean, there will not be a sufficient time for everybody to uh, voice out their thoughts for each question. But for me personally, Apart from that, what I find challenging was also the, uh, you know, having to juggle between work and the preparation for the workshop and presentation uh, itself, because uh, you know it can be very tiring after work and you still have to complete these activities. But uh, because you know it's a 
team assignment, you have the responsibility to, to finish your work. So you really have to discipline yourself to, to finish your part of the work in the team. And uh, we will also require to have a lot of team meetings uh, for discussion, especially for the, for the present, for presentation at the uh, end of workshop three. Um, so I guess I, I learned to manage my and manage and organize my time a lot better. But I guess uh, you guys don't have to worry about it because it's more of a team effort, I would say. Um, your different teammates uh, will be able to share different experience and they'll be, you, you guys will be able to help each other to get through the module. And uh, in my opinion, it's quite a fun learning process. Lah. So don't worry too much about it. And I guess that's all from me. I hope it helps uh, you guys to better understand the program, especially for Capstan. Uh, all right, uh, I'll pass it to Baya to share her experience. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Shinyi. It's such an inspiring journey to share. Um, for your information, Shinyi uh, is my MakePa study partner because uh, she has been with me since day one at Sunwe Test. So yeah, I'm great to have her aside. Well, talking about my experience, um, the reasons why I choose make part is more on the exposure that I've given. I still remember in my second year uh, of university, Miss Island herself fly to University of Auckland to promote about this program. So when I, I get to know more about this make part cancer program, I was instantly falling up because it is such a coincidence where MIGPA has collaborated with Australia and also New Zealand Chartered Accounting. So I think it's the best of both worlds because it gives me the chance to be a dual membership for this CA. Since I know that we will be using CAN syllabus for MIGPA, I was quite happy in the sense that I already familiar with the Australia and New Zealand education structure because it's focused on overall performance throughout the year, rather than you just focus on a final exam where you have just one shot. And to be honest, MIGPA is quite different from other CA program because it has a costume module, and which I will touch a little bit later on, and also is an open book exam. But well, uh, even though it's an open book, it doesn't mean it is easy as ABC, as Miss Island said, because uh, when I do the exam, I found that the question is definitely not direct. You still got to think so hard. Well, this is the beauty of the program because it doesn't mean that you don't have to study or memorize. Because with open book, it only helps you to boost confidence whenever you unsure about which concept to apply. Because to be honest, eventually in the real work environment, this is how it works. It is about deciding whether you are doing the right thing, not about whether you memorize this concept. So that's why I think make podcasts is the best avenue for me to uh, prepare and help me in the real working environment, especially in an audit world. Another thing about make part is this is the local CA body as uh, Mr. Chiwai said. Um, so there is a little bit of patriotism in me where I would love to support a homegrown professional body. Because if it's not us, who else going to do that? Well, since I already decided at that time I wanted to make bar, so left with a question where I want to do it. Um, the first place I went was Sunway Test, just to look around. Even though I know that uh, Sunway never offered make bar, but to be honest, in 2019, I was lucky because Sunway is providing the tuition for the first time. So if I join, I will be the first batch for this program. To be honest, I was a little bit nervous because I don't know what to expect. So as I do more inquiries, I found that this is a, a very special tuition program because the student isn't really that, that big. It's just a few people where I can focus more and definitely you can have undivided attention from your lecturer. So as I join, um, to be honest, I was feeling blessed because the lecturers are so great. We have Miss OIC for both our financial reporting, FIN, and also audit paper. And then we have uh, Mr. Ravi for our tax facilitator. And then last but not least, also Mr. Ankasheng. So each and every one 
are very, very intelligent, very passionate, dedicated, and so sincere in teaching us the subject. So I would like to give a credit to Sunway for being able to uh, get them to teach us and Sunway managed to provide us with the mock exam and revision class that is really, really helpful. So in Sunway, how the class was conducted uh, as recommended by Nick Parkins is uh, via interactive learning rather than just giving lecture. So from my experience, the lecturer loved to ask us questions. So it trained us to think critically beyond the box and it trained us how to have a professional thought process. So that will be the, my highlights, uh, the, the highlights for my life as a MIGPA student. Um, but then, to be honest, the journey wasn't that so smooth. I still have some challenges in preparing for MIGPA exam. Because for your information, MIGPA definitely required quite a fair amount of commitment as we are uh, have some internal assessment where we have three quizzes for the semester for MAA, FIN, and also audit. But for tax, we have a project to submit. To be honest, uh, CA, you need to be very, very disciplined or else you will juggle between work and study. And another challenge is um, when I was doing the first exam, which is FIN, I, I need to arrange strategy on how to sit for an open exam. I have to uh, figure out on how to do indexing for my critical file and the notes. So students don't, just don't be surprised that you really need to, do a, to, to buy quite a lot of sticky tags because you have to arrange all the chapters, color code. Or maybe I can show you some. Like this is like pin model. So it's quite colorful because there's a lot of chapter, but you have to arrange properly. Um, moving on, maybe I can proceed with uh, capstone. So basically, this is a case study based exam. In this model, you are required to give your thoughts. You have to though, and learn how to give a quality one rather than just one uh, one short answer. Uh, as Shidi mentioned, we have three workshops that we need to discuss with our teammate on a selected question. And then you have to submit the uh, report. So that will be our, uh, what it called, preparation mark. And then during the workshop, you need to participate on the discussion so that you can get a participation mark. And to be honest, this module, I think it's quite a, a fun and light where we are able to get a new friends and we can uh, divide our, what it call burden because it's a teamwork uh, project. Um, well, another thing is this paper, it focuses on how you apply previous subject where you need to able to analyze the three sets of financial statement in exam, identifying their strategy, giving advice on how to improve in terms of their management accounting. And also you sometimes have to handle dilemma situation that could lead you to breach code of conduct as a chartered accountant. So that's quite a tricky one. Um, just don't worry that, to be honest, CA uh, Big Park Cats is actually still doable, even though some people think it's, uh, some people advise me before that don't take Big Park because it's hard. But I think you have to get your motivation right. Because for me, this becoming a CA is really my goals I already set earlier uh, before I did my degree. I really want to uh, finish up my CA as soon as possible. And compared during my university study, I do feel uh, a little bit different because when I study in uni, I just want to pass through. But in CA, it's quite different. It's because I really enjoy the learning where I was given a chance to really understand in details about this technical knowledge, especially Finn, because I, I think it's fun where it is so relevant and makes sense. Another thing is um, I have my classmates that share the same value and goals in becoming the charter, charter accounting. So I think I will never be alone, even though uh, I was struggling during the course. All right. Uh, well, um, I think that's a little bit from me. So thank you so much. Over to you, Ms. Sam. OK, 
Okay. Thank you, Shinyi and Baya, uh, for your insightful sharing and the motivation given to the students. Okay, I hope, uh, students, I hope, uh, you know, after hearing the sharing session that you are all fired up to join MIGPA program, as what you mentioned, with discipline and hard work, you know, uh, MIGPA program is definitely, uh, you know, you are able to do it, all right? Okay, truly appreciate uh, Shini and Baya for taking your time and sharing uh, your experience with the students. Okay, so students, uh, if you have any question for them, all right, you can already start to type in the comment section and we will address it at the end of the session. All right, so, but before we move to the Q&A session, um, let, uh, we would like to actually take a group photo with all of you, all right? So, uh, it would be good if you can just turn on your camera for one or two minutes, all right? So, for this group photo, um, yeah, no, uh, Evelyn, are you ready? Yeah, I can. So everyone just hold your pose. Huh? But maybe we need more students to have your um, camera on. Yep. Everyone, if you're okay, just turn on your camera just for one or two minutes. All right. Then we will take a group photo. I think Evelyn, maybe we can just take a group photo. Okay, yeah. I'm going to take a group photo. So everyone, you hold your pose, yeah? Yeah. For those who are there, smile. Yay, yes, we are done. Thank you, everyone. Okay, thank you, everyone. Okay, for um, opening your camera for one or two minutes. All right, so now our fi final agenda of the night is the long-awaited Q&A session. All right, so st students, if you have any burning questions to ask our speakers, it can be question for Mr. Chiwai, it can be question for Shini, it can be question for Baya, all right, feel free to type in the comment section and I believe they will try their level best to address all questions. Also, if you have any question with regards to Sunway Test uh, or MIGPA program itself, okay, we, we actually have Miss Emily and Miss Eileen here as well. So they will definitely uh, you know, try their level best to answer your question as well. So you can start to type your question in the chat box or if you, you can actually unmute yourself to actually ask the question. Okay, so we already have one question from Darwin to Shini and Baya, all right? You mentioned a little about having group discussion for the capstone module. Do we select our own group members or are they assigned for us? Were there, were there any challenges of working in groups? Thank you in advance. So ladies, who want to answer this? Um, maybe both of us can touch a little bit. All right. um, well, um, for capstone model, uh, MIGPA will arrange the group where we we're not allowed to choose. But <laughs> for my case, I was destined to be with the same group as Chin Yi. And uh, talking about... <laughs> so lucky. Yes, we're so lucky, to be honest. <laughs> um, so basically, the challenge that, as Chin Yi said earlier, it's about like preparing the workshop where we have to juggle between work and also the preparation. But you can add some more for that, Shilin? Yeah, sure, sure. Um, to add on also, uh, for there will be a total of 25 person each group, and then uh, they will separate us into a group of five. So then uh, we will be have to uh, work on our pre-workshop activities and submit our minutes report. Uh, and discuss with our team members. Uh, and the challenges, I guess, is uh, 
you know, just like when you're doing your uni assignments, sometimes you have to fight, you know, find time to, to uh, meet up with everybody. And because everybody are working, all my team members, uh, uh, most, mostly they are working already and some already have family. So uh, definitely there will be challenges in where some will not be uh, free to join the discussion. So uh, sometimes our discussion will only consist of a few members and then the others will join like may maybe other session. Now. But so far, my, my teammates are all have been very cooperative. So I guess it Hi, Shini. Hello, Shini. Hello. Yep, you, you just got disconnected. Okay, okay. Uh, now you are back. Oh, All right. Okay, okay, okay. Yep, let's where, did, where, where did I got disconnected? <laughs> and you're saying that yeah. you have a very good team member. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I was saying that it depends on your luck, uh, who you get to work with. But uh, in my group, all of the 25 people, they are very nice people. And I'm, I, I'm sure they're very responsible, uh, responsible as well. So uh, don't have to worry too much about it. Lah. Mm. Mm, just to add on a bit, because I uh, just to be aware that because of COVID, all the workshop will be uh, online. So it's like having a Zoom with them. So when you want to answer the question, you have to be kind of competitive and raise your hand quickly so that you will be given a chance to answer this question for the sake of the marks sometime. <laughs> Thank you for the question, yeah, Darwin. Right. Thank you, Shini. Thank you, Thank you Bayan. All right. So, Okay, guys, any more question for anyone? If you want to know more about, you know, uh, Capstone module, Baya is here, Shini is here. Any more question? Feel free to unmute yourself to ask. Any more question? Okay, there's a question now uh, from Yap Motion. Uh, okay, just wondering, do you all, Toshini and Baya, just wondering, do you all take MIPA part time? How long do you, uh, how long do you all take to complete the program? Is it two years? So, uh, okay, maybe Shini, you want to, Shini and Baya, you want to answer this? Oh, okay. Well, for last year's together with Baya, and then for uh for Capstone, I actually did it uh part time. I uh, decided to do it like off peak period lah, you know, because uh I started working start of this year, so uh we get to choose when we're gonna take the module. So uh all in all, yeah, yes, we 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 took around two years. Exactly two years, I would say. If I pass the exam. <laughs> yeah, you will, Shinji. As well, for me, same for she. Uh, I started to take part-time after my, eh, sorry, my part-time course after my third paper. So for the fourth and fifth, it's uh, full-time. Eh, sorry, uh, part-time. Before this is full-time. Hello? Can... You can hear me, huh? Okay, is there any other question? Okay, um, next question. 
uh, Chan Man Yi. Hi, may I know is there difference between MIGPA and ACCA is the MIGPA would have the group assignment whereby ACCA is all examination. Um, I, I, Eileen, do you? Um, sure, I can, I can address this one. Yep, Eileen. So I think overall the programs are pretty different. Um, definitely the structure, as you have seen, yes, we do have the group assignment. But I think another key thing is um, the fact that our program is really trying to develop your analytical thinking skills and application skills, which is why we have open book exams. Um, versus ACCA, which is closed book. So I think the outcome might be quite different in terms of how you prepare yourself for the exam. I don't know whether Baya or Shini, you can have, if you have any examples, or maybe you can compare yourself with other uh, peers of yours have done other programs. Like, do you think there is any difference uh, in terms of how you see things because of the training that you've gotten through the program? What do you think? Um, yeah, I can share a little bit. Um, I do have a colleague that doing SCCA. Um, she told me that I was lucky to doing MIGPA where it has internal assessment. So it uh, trained us to be consistent because you know, like CA program, the syllabus is quite thick and overwhelmed. So by having an internal quiz, you can arrange yourself because quiz one, uh, it cover from chapter one to chapter five. So by that time, you already covered the material until chapter five. So when it, so it goes, the list goes on. So when it's come to final preparation, you are actually already covered the whole syllabus already. So that's why I, I love it so much. <laughs> Shini, do you have anything to add? Mm, I agree with Bayala. Mm. Um, I like to add on that in terms. So just talking about the structure, I think um, Baya and Shini have explained that. But on a bigger scheme of things, which is the GAA passport, that's something that the MIGPA CANS program can give our graduates versus ACCA, which is not part of the GAA. So I think you have to consider uh, if you want a global career where you can have that local support globally, then you will definitely want to have the GAA passport and our program can give you that. Yeah. Okay, Sam, next question. Okay, next question. Uh, how MIGPA prepares students for industry revolution? Ah, I think this question, Mr. Our speaker, Mr. Ong, maybe you can address this, you know, how MIGPA prepares students for industry, IR 4.0. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Samuel. I, I, I think when I look at questions, first thing came to my mind, uh, talking about industry revolution. So I, I think it's very broad. I probably need to make some assumption in relation to uh, the, the anger of the, the person who asked this. Uh, Shafiq, right? Shafiq, uh, who asked this must be coming from maybe Shafiq, the Shafika. automation or Shafika, sorry, Shafika, mm -hmm. automation, AI. Is, is that is that correct? Um, you can give me a hint that whether this is a correct question that they're looking into the change of landscape from a typical what accountants will be doing and so on. If 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 this is a direction, I I suppose. Uh, what is the trend and the moving forward and how I see it is that the automation and uh, the even with the RPA, AI and so on, they will actually replace the repetitive transactional type of uh, work. Uh, typically, I look at it as that uh, the executive or clerk level will be superseded, replaced by machine. If you look at professional exams, MACPA is one, and to be fair, the rest of the professional exams, they are training accountants from a few aspects. Number one, technical competency. Number two is also more on business-related decision-making process, uh, analytical skill, and so on. So these are the skills, uh, irrespective of a machine or advancement of technology, that cannot be replaced. 
Furthermore, for any accountants who are actually really involved in the industry, in either in the professional line or in commerce, uh, as and when you move along, a lot of uh, judgment will be actually involved in marrying your technical competency, looking into how the dynamics of the organization, human behavior, putting all this together and present your information for financial, uh, for, for decision making. The current trend, actually, the trend that I'm seeing very interestingly happening is actually that not only reporting on financial, but it's also reporting on the value created by non-financial related uh, aspect, uh, the effect of climate change and so on. And accountants is actually well positioned in addressing and meeting those needs because accountants, one of the our core competency is really measuring, reporting and assurance. And when situation are getting more challenges, many organizations are looking into how a company can actually generate and create value both financially and non-financial. I think that solid ground of technical training uh, would help a lot and that cannot be replaced by machine or any artificial intelligence, definitely cannot. I hope I answered that question. Okay, thank you, GY. Uh, that's a very clear answer. Okay, I, uh, Shafika, I hope Mr. Ong has answered your, your query. Okay, uh, Baya and Shinyi, next question is, uh, in your opinion, which module do you think is the most challenging to pass? I'll presume out of the five. Is it capstone? So maybe Shinyi, you want to start first? All right. Uh, hi, Amira. Um, for me personally, I would think more of MAAF. Uh, management accounting and applied finance uh, more than the capstone unit because uh, for me math requires a lot of analytical skills uh, and then apart from that you also have there will also be a lot of calculation involved so you have to be good in both things and during exams there will have uh, like case study and a lot for you to analyze and I find it quite difficult for me in terms of how uh, I need to manage my time to to you know uh, because you know you have to think about your opinions, it's more about your opinions, how you analyze things, and you need time to think. Think. I mean, at least for me, I need time to think about it. So, in my opinion, I find that uh, to be the most challenging for me among all uh, all the other technical uh, modules. And then for capstone, uh, not really so much because, uh, like I said, capstone is a lot uh, team effort involved. So. Uh, even if you are not so strong at one thing, your team can compensate for it. So uh, you guys can help each other to, to you know, uh, like for the presentation also, you, you guys can help each other to uh, raise up your marks. And then apart from that, I think we've also forgot to mention that Capstone final exam, actually, they will uh, release a case study two weeks before your exam. So uh, you'll be able to analyze beforehand uh, or maybe you know, if you want, you can like analyze what question they will ask. But uh, this, I guess, uh, it increases the chance of you passing because uh, you get to you get to have more time to analyze it before you sit for the exam. So yeah. <laughs> okay, Baya. Um. Okay. Uh, to be honest, um. Math is, is one of the hardest paper because it's required a lot of thinking skill though. It's focused more on analytical skills where you have to, uh, basically we have two questions on analytical skill where you focus on overall financial statement and another one is like solely focused on managing your working capital. And then another third and fourth question, uh, it focus on um, applied finance. So for this subject, time is the main enemy because uh, to be honest we don't really uh, can predict what is the examiner one we just need to be smart to analyze the posture answer what did they really want because uh, for MIGPA, um the, the how would say like because it's it's something it's changed the, the question is changed because it's open book so it doesn't really have a pattern um, that would be some of the challenging things. Lah. Uh, and for Capstone, as she said, it was, it was okay because we're given the, given the uh, pre-release material. 
So you have to really analyze, calculate the ratios beforehand. In fact, me and Shini did some discussion about uh, the case study, but I just noted that in the question, there will be also additional material that the question will be twisted somehow. So just be careful in that. Okay, thank you, Bayam. All right, next question from Das, das Rina. I think this is will be for Eileen. Where can we check the accredited university recognized by MIPA or is it just based on MQA accreditation to do only five papers? Uh, as far as I'm concerned, no all program have MQA accreditation is recognized by MIA. Is MIPA based on MIA or MQA? Okay, thanks, Dasrina, for the question. So in terms of where you can check for our accredited list of universe, uh, accredited university listing, it's on our website. And if you visit our advanced stage, you'll be able to uh, link to a document which actually shows you which universities we've accredited and how many exemptions they obtain. So you'll get to know whether the students from, who graduated from there only do five papers or more. So in terms of how we accredit a university, it's based on our own assessment. Of course, we need, it, we need the institutions to be MQA accredited, but we actually go beyond that. We look quite deeply into the syllabus. We make sure that there's quality in the teaching and in the examination. Um, we will do an accreditation exercise that sometimes takes a few months with the university to understand how they uh, teach the students. So based on everything that we've assessed, then we accredit the university. So we actually do our own. MIA also does their own accreditation. So there is some overlap in terms of um, both MIA and MIPA accredited institutions, but there are some that are accredited by MIA, which MIPA does not. So um, the list can be found on our website. And I, I do believe our list is a lot longer than uh, MIA's list in Schedule 1 of the Accountants Act. So we have done um, quite an extensive uh, accreditation of the major um, higher learning institutions in Malaysia. So I can just tell you that majority of the public universities are already accredited and quite a number of private ones. And even the... Uh, Australian and New Zealand universities. So yeah, if you need more information, I can share the link with you in a short while in this chat box. So I hope that answers your question, Jasrina. Okay, thank you, Eileen. Okay, there are actually few of you direct message me. Uh, I think you are shy to type in the chat box. <laughs> so you all direct message me the message. Okay, I have a few questions here. The, the first one is for Mr. Chiwai. Mr. Chiwai, since you are an assurance leader of EY, uh, what traits do you see in a fresh graduate who wish to join your team? So I, I believe the question is like, um, what are the criteria that you look in, in a fresh graduate if they apply to join your team? Yeah, thank, thank you, uh, Samuel, and thank you for the shy question. Um, there are two aspects that we basically look at. Uh, at the minimum, we look at the um, academic, the qualification. Uh, if you're coming in as a degree, we will have to look at your CGPA. Uh, if you are, you have cleared a professional exam, I think that that is that is uh, you clear the first hurdle. But track record also we will look at as well. So so that that's one aspect. The other aspect is actually via some of our online assessment and also uh, through the pro process of interview. Uh, we actually would like to, through the interview, really understand the value system of a candidate. Because what we believe is that within our profession, one of the important uh, quality that we are looking at is actually uh, having the minimum or the expected required, expected level of uh, honours, integrity, and to a certain extent, uh, ability to, to think clearly. So, so these are the a few softer criteria that we are looking at. In the interview process, we will not be really asking you any technical question. We will not be testing your accounting standard and so on. But more from the question and answer itself, trying to actually have a feel about the uh, thinking process and, 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 and value system of, of any candidate. So I think these are two major aspects that we, we are looking at. Yeah, thank, thank you, Mr. Joy. 
Uh, the next direct uh, DM question one is um, okay, um, Pushini and Baya, how do you manage your studies while you are working? Maybe Shini and Baya, Shini, maybe you can start give a short answer on this. Uh, I, for me, I guess it's just you have to be very disciplined. Uh. You know, even though you're tired uh, after work, you still have to like, you know, the mindset mindset is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to know what's your goal. And so uh, if, if you know what your goals are, you want to pass it, you have like what the song say, if you have enough determination, then you will have the uh, uh, motivation to, to study. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And also like you have to sacrifice your weekends, uh, maybe not being being able to, you know, go out to meet your friends and all. So yeah, prioritize your uh, your time. Mm. Thank you. Um, maybe I can add on a little bit. Because um, when I was doing my part-time paper, I was in uh, audit field. So it's more on the planning at the first day of your semester. Because you, how I, how I do it is I plan on like, uh, which this, this chapter by what time I want to, to study. So basically having a, a proper planning at the beginning of the semester will help you to uh, spread the burden. And then uh, if you are chosen to be one of the big four um, associates, those big four are very generate, are very generous in, pro, in giving us um, a study break. So maybe during that study break, you can uh, catch up and do some study. So I think the key point is motivation for you not to give up and need a really, really good planning. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Shini and Baya. Uh, again, one more question to Mr. Chi Wai. Um, what does it take to become a partner of a big four firm? <laughs> Students are very curious of your journey, oh. Mr. <laughs> oh, got to be very good, got to be very smart, got to be this and that. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, definitely not. I I believe that uh, fundamentally everyone, when you are pursuing a career, you got to find something that is passionate of doing. If you are passionate of doing what your job is, naturally you will do well. Uh, I, I don't think there's any secret like making it a partner. Uh, in fact, Making partner is one of the important, uh, I would say, journey and achievement, but making being successful in, in other lines also could be equally important and, and considered successful. But uh, I, I'm sure all the people here in the call uh, are very young and uh, along the process in your career, you really got to find something passionate. What I've been uh, passionate about is really that uh, I, I realized that in this line, and actually many people are able to stay so long in this line, I have a lot of opportunity to create positive impact to either my colleagues, my staff now, and also uh, my clients. And to a very large extent also, I have a lot of opportunity to contribute back to, to the society. So this is one of the so-called purpose and the passion that I found, I discover when I progress in my career. And when I discover that, the work that I'm doing is actually a platform for me to do a lot of uh, interesting stuff to create a positive impact to people working with me, to clients that uh, I serve, to bodies that I, I join. So so with that, because I've, I'm passionate, tendency is that I, I try to do my best to create a positive impact and naturally you progress in your career. So the key thing is that you need to do something that you, you are passionate of doing and not for the sake of your friends are doing and therefore you join. Another guy said that this is a very good income, then you join. Definitely not. That is only short-term, I would say short-term pleasure, but it wouldn't give you the long-term satisfaction. So look into areas that you are really passionate. And uh, coming back to professional qualification, professional qualification like MACPA actually give you the good platform for you to do a lot of things that you're passionate of doing. I hope that provides some perspective because it's a long uh, it's a big question and it, it can take me half an hour to actually talk about it. But I thought in short, it's a, this is a summarized version that, that hopefully that it, it, you will see, uh, you'll be able to, able to uh, uh, see some perspective from, from the angle. Right, okay. Thank you, GY. Uh, okay, we have two more 
uh, last the final two shy question all right um i think this will be for miss uh emily miss emily uh how does sunway test help or support the students in their studies okay thanks samuel um, actually, as I mentioned earlier, somewhere test, uh, we have our own structure of how we conduct the classes. Basically, the, we have tests and uh, progress tests and also mock exam to, to, to find out how the, the student perform. And also, we also have uh, revision classes, intensive revision classes that we go through all the past year questions uh, to help the student. And uh, mock exam and uh, tests are it's quite similar to the final, so we also provide them with all the support, uh, so-called support, um, uh, like skills, yeah, for them to also um, do uh, uh, perform well in the examinations. And the lectures also have this so-called um, course interaction with students. They form the uh, group WhatsApp, yeah. So they are constantly uh, sharing information as well as with the uh, among the peers. Yeah. So the lectures have been here for many years, not only teaching um, MIPA programs, they're also very familiar with other pro programs. So with the knowledge that they have gained, it helps the student actually. So they have very close uh, interaction with the students. So one thing that our lecture believe is you, you can share as much information with them as much as possible when it comes to um, not only from the book, but also real life experience. Okay, I hope I answered the question. Okay, thank you, Miss Emily. Our final question of the night uh, is uh, right now. Our final question of the night. I don't know whether this is going to be Miss Emily or Eileen. Uh, any scholarships to pursue MIGPA at Sunway Test? So is Eileen or Miss Emily? Um, the Yayasan Panaraju scholarships have been on offer. I think it just closed for, for now. But um, I believe there is some ongoing um, over, like check back with us next year and follow us on social media because whenever the uh, uh, applications open, then you'll be able to apply and check out the eligibility requirements and apply for them. So at the moment, I think it's just about closed, actually. So next year, there should be more on offer. Just to add on, uh, Samuel, we also uh, just fin finalized the group of uh, Mark Pass scholarship, the educational fund. In fact, two days ago, that one, we were also open for term one students. Yeah. But now, too, they have gone through the whole process for term one. So the next term will be, and the next, uh, Shortlisting will be uh, for term two, yeah. Okay, all right, thank you, uh, Miss Emily and Miss Eileen. I hope uh, that answers your question. Uh, okay, uh, we have Ayn Amira. Um, Miss, uh, Mr. Chiwai, uh, can you share with us what are the challenges in an audit field during the current pandemic? I think this uh, is a very good question. Yeah, so. I, I presume that the question is actually coming from uh, from the professional angle, as in those who are working in the line, I suppose. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, yeah because there are, there are so many challenges that, that we are facing, companies are facing, as a country we are facing. So I, if I were to talk from the uh, professional accountants and auditors angle, especially those who have started or in, in the process of pursuing their career and so on. Uh, for example, uh, Baya, Xinyi in this case, uh, a few, actually a few observations that we gather. Number one is that uh, we are operating working from home arrangement and many of our clients are actually operating working from home as well. So when you started your career in the firm, uh, naturally, if you work really face to face, you've got a lot of guidance immediately from your senior who are still sitting next to you. So when you're having this current pandemic and everybody is working from home, naturally the opportunity to get that guidance is very much lesser. So when you turn to the right, turn, turn to the left, these are all your siblings, your spouse, whoever is no longer your senior. So that is the first challenge. Second challenge that we experience, what we observe, including my own team, is that uh, the lack of teaming feeling. 
in, in the firm, normally people work as a, as a group, as a team. And naturally, you feel, we feel good because you have people who are like-minded and same age, and you help to really sometimes work long hours, and you pull through difficulties, you share the joy together, you have fun having, uh, having lunch together and so on, a lot of little gathering. But working from home actually cut down substantially those opportunities, and people feel lost. What happened? What happened to the teaming? Uh, the, the, that is really the teaming and the learning are the two most challenging uh, uh, situation. And if this situation were to continue, we also have concern that the development of people skill for our uh, younger accountants uh, will be harder because you are having lesser opportunities to interact with human. You interact a lot in via machine and you can't really uh, practice that uh, interpersonal skill. You can't really sense the emotion of your, your audience. So these are the typical few challenges that uh, uh, many people are facing now. And, uh, and, and that is something that we, we are looking at and how we can actually overcome that. So I, I hope that provides some perspective and answer to the questions. If not, please let me know because it's a big topic that we, we are seeing a lot of interesting trend happening. Okay, thank you, Chiwai. So, Ayn, I hope Mr. Uh, Mr. Chiwai has uh, answered your question. All right. Uh, okay, that's the end of our Q&A session. Uh, thank you all for your question. And some of you are, some of them are shy questions, I understand, all right? No problem for direct message messaging me. Okay, so, but uh, before we end, I know it's already 10.25 at the moment. Uh, just give, I would like to hand over the session to Mr. Hasid from Mikpa, Malaysia. Uh, just give him a few minutes. Uh, he would like to actually share a slide to address the technology in Mikpa program. I think I think this related to the question about the technology time. So Hasid, I will just pass the session to you. Okay, thanks Sam. Okay, just a quick one everyone. Uh, so uh, just now someone asked about uh, how Mikpa um, uh, get ready our candidates for the IR for the next uh, industrial revolution. So we do cover a lot of topics related to um, technology. So as you can see, we cover uh, a lot of interesting topics such as big data, cybersecurity, uh, data and IT risk, data analytics, impact of AI. So all of these are incorporated in our uh, modules uh, throughout the MIGPA CANS program. So I hope uh, that uh, clarifies and add more info uh, on the questions just now. Okay, Asip. Thank you, Asip, for the clarification. Any of you want to ask any question to Mr. Asip? Okay, if no, um, I guess that is the end of the session. Um, I would like to say a big thank you again to Mr. Chiwai from EY and you know, uh, Maya and Shini. You are, you know, you take, taking for taking the time you know, in this evening, one and a half hour to share your experience with the students. Uh, we truly appreciate it from Sunray Test. Uh, we like to say a big thank you to all of you. So uh, for students, uh, thank you for staying with us till the end. All right, so I hope all of you uh, have benefited greatly from this session. Uh, for more information, I think you can see in the chat box below, uh, there's my email and there's Miss Emily's email over there. All right, we are the contact person for in Sunway Test. All right, so if you want to know more of the Big Pop program offered in Sunway Test, uh, now feel free to drop us an email, uh, you know, anytime and we definitely will reply to all of you okay so thank you uh we hope to see all of you in sunday college soon so if there is no anything that's the end of the session uh i wish all of you um the best stay safe and it's almost the end of the year so i wish all of you happy new year so i will see all of, i hope to see all of you in sunday college in 2021 have a good year ahead all right thank you everybody stay safe and good night Thank you, Thanks, everyone. everyone. Take care. Take care. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Chiwai. Bye, Chiwai. All Shani. the best. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Mr. Chiwai. Hey, thank you, everyone. Thanks, Chiwai. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Thank you. And your sharing. Thank you. Thank you.
Yeah. Thank you, Baya and Shinyi. Yeah. Thanks, Baya. Thanks, Shinyi. Nice to meet you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to meet you all too. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Good night. Hey, good night, Jujuai. Yeah. Thank you. Sign with us. Shinyi, Baya, you all wait for a while. I think Miss Emily should want to talk to you all. Yeah, that's why we're waiting. <laughs> okay. But well, luckily, like, you uh, told me. I almost, <laughs> I almost ended the call. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> I can feel that you're pressing the end call. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much, Hanwitas. Because I don't know. I, I don't know what to say. Because like, if if hey, it's me. not because of Sunway, yeah. I think I would change <laughs> to go somewhere else and maybe change mm. my course as well. Yeah. So just thank you. Shini, how do you bump into Miss Emily la, during the open day? Oh, long story, man. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I, I actually had my mindset on doing another professional course. And okay. then uh, I accidentally asked uh, Miss Emily about it. <laughs> then Miss Emily was like, oh, Miss Emily, share, share a bit la, on, on that particular co uh, professional course that I was interested in. Mm. And then uh, she went on to introduce Vipa. Then I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> That immediately changed my mind. Really. <laughs> okay. I think I know what I, what is the another course that you are looking at, but. <laughs> <laughs> See, I still remember you came with your father, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right after my final exam. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. Then you came back again the next day or something like that. Yeah. Mm. I'm glad both of you are doing well, Baya yeah, and Chi. Yeah. Thank and you. there are a few more that uh, also, um, you know, uh, taking capstone. So all the best to both of you. I really appreciate both of you taking the time, you know, and come in and, and share your thoughts and your, your tips, you know, to all the, uh, to us and also, also for those people 